Shalom from Jerusalem. That's, uh, I hope this time it's going to work. I'm so happy to be back here and to be able to report to you uh, on Facebook Live on several things that are happening in the world, in the Middle East, in Israel, and also to give you some ministry updates of what is going on with Behold Israel. First of all, just so you know, I'm kind of uh, tan because we just finished an amazing, amazing time of uh, probably 10 days of filming throughout Israel. We filmed in eight different locations, Bible studies on location of one, almost one hour Bible study each. And the Lord has truly blessed. We had so many amazing encounters with God and it was really a blessed time. And uh, the people that were with me, most of them are on the way back to the U.S. And um, some are still here. And thank you for your prayers. If you uh, remember th uh, that project in your prayers, because it was a great success. We're going to start now the grueling process of um, of working on, on, on those messages and editing them. And eventually by March, I believe, the uh, Israel Unveiled Volume 2 will come out. Also exciting news, um, you can get from us an email, a weekly email update. Uh, if you only register, if you signed up on, on our Facebook page of Behold Israel or my own Facebook page, there is a button called Sign Up. Just sign up, get an email and verify it, and you'll get every week a summary of all the stuff that I reported throughout the week. And I believe that that will bless mostly people who aren't into uh, Facebook or YouTube or stuff like that. Everything will be within that body of that email. So I'm excited about that. Don't forget to sign up on the, on Facebook or send us your email address and your first and last name to info at, Israel, at the beholdisrael.org. All right, let's get to uh, business. First of all, um, I would like to report uh, what's going on in the Middle East. First of all, uh, there was a very tragic event that happened uh, a few hours ago off the coast of Libya. Uh, two boats full of immigrants um, uh, actually drowned or sunk and we have um, more than 240 people that died just a few hours ago and it is extremely sad and, and um, they're still working on trying to recover more bodies right now. But that brings a death toll to over 4,000 people that died in the attempt to go from, um, from Libya and from Northern Africa all the way across to Italy and enter into Europe. And that is a staggering number. So remember in your prayers, these people and their families. Um, another thing is, it's been a while since we talked about what's going on in Aleppo. I mean, the whole... Um, world um, attention was shifted by the media who works for um, the establishment and the, the, the whole attention was shifted to Mosul in Iraq and they're trying to tell you that they have great success and everything is going on well there I mean, I've been reporting for the last few times already that things are not going well there at all um, however while all of that happened we see that in Aleppo, the largest city in Syria, Aleppo is much bigger even than Damascus itself. In Aleppo, President Putin um, pulled the brakes and stopped the heavy bombardment f for the last 10 days or so, which uh, we believe might be under the pressure of, of the West or, or fear of sanctions or maybe to just regroup and, and let the um, the aircraft carrier Admiral Koznitsov arrived and it indeed finally arrived right now and maybe once uh, they will get their act together they'll resume the attack in Aleppo but in the meantime the moment the Russians stopped backing the um, the moment the Russians stopped backing the um, Shiite assault on Aleppo the Sunnis were immediately able to hit back and they hit back really, really hard over the last couple of days. And so Aleppo is far from being won by the Shiites or by the Russians. And this is exactly the thing that makes Vladimir Putin very, very frustrated. 
Turkey plays a very significant role in this whole thing. The Turks, as we reported a couple months ago already, they have invaded already into Syria. And not only that, they have their own soldiers and tanks, they are arming the uh, rebels in northern Syria, and they have created a safe zone for the Sunni rebels in northern Syria to always be able to come back there, regroup, breathe, um, get some new weapons, and continue their fight against Bashar al-Assad and, um, and his supporters. Now, the Turks are extremely um, nervous right now because of what's going on in Iraq. They see that the Shiite Iraqi army, backed by the, um, the Iranian proxies, um, moving towards Mosul, which is the large Sunni city in Iraq, um, the, the Turks are extremely angry. Um, right now, the Iraqi uh, government is warning Turkey from going deep inside their territory, and they're saying that that will be a declaration of war. So, Bashar, so what happened is that um, uh, we see that um, Erdogan is basically um, arming the rebels in northern Syria with the hope that they will um, get the weapon into Iraq. And also he wants to create the same safe zone in northern Iraq also for the rebels to be able to regroup, rest, and rearm. And by doing so, he will also stop the expansion of the Kurds, the Kurds from, from um, northern Iraq into northern Syria, because it's all about the Kurds for the, for the Turks, and it's all about not letting Shiite Islam um, expanding. So again, we've been talking about it before, what is going on in Syria and Iraq right now is all about uh, Turkish, Kurds, and it's all about Shiite Sunni battle where America and Russia are finding themselves trying to help and backing up their own people. America's uh, influence diminishes quite fast and the Iranians are smelling blood. That's why the Iranians can can speak very uh, very freely on on their attempt to even go and infiltrate into the United States. Um, the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard um, just released a statement a couple days ago saying that they have no problem to go all the way to the depth of the United States and do whatever they want. They see weakness. They smell weakness. They understand that anything they want and anything they do will not be answered with any harsh. A, um, action from the side of the Americans and that's that should trouble every American citizen right now um, one more thing that um, I want to update you about is um, the fact that um, the um, in, in, in overall in America right now um, the uncertainty with the elections causes all the players in the Middle East also to try and gain as much um, land or as much territory as possible because God knows who the next president is going to be. And so the uncertainty in Washington uh, radiates to the whole uh, world and of course even to the Middle East. What's going on in America, I, I kind of, uh, try, I'm trying not to talk much about the elections in America. I do know a lot, but I guess um, I don't have the freedom to to speak much about it, but I, all I can say is that um, there's a lot of uh, pressure and a lot of uh, tension and a lot of frustration on, in the Democratic uh, camp right now, seeing the numbers, the plunging numbers of support on their camp and the um, explosion on the other side. And I believe that even the polls that are showing a, a, either that it's tied or 1% or of um, uh, that, that Trump is leading, they are even not uh, correct. I believe that um, the actual support in Trump is much bigger, much bigger. All it takes to basically um, cancel all of that will be rigged uh, uh, elections or some sort of an action uh, of a president that will basically, um, I would say, cancel the elections. And we're not sure what's going to happen because we're talking about less than a week and we're talking about things that are rising every day from the side of the FBI and other places, uh, emails that are being leaked by the thousands per day, things that leaves no room for imagination. And I think that um, if it's not 
the FBI, if it's not the intelligent community, it will be the people. And uh, we'll see what happens. What I sense, though, is no matter what, these are the greatest moments for the church. And, I tell you, and I'll explain why. Uh, should Hillary Clinton win, and, and it is obvious that the evangelical Christians that uh, are not in support of her will hear back from her. And it's, uh, it's obvious also that those powers of darkness of, of that liberal world will uh, hunt the evangelicals and the church will be more persecuted in America than ever before. And, and persecution, by the way, is not always bad. It is bad if you don't like to feel discomfort. But it is good because that is when the church normally thrives. This is when the church normally grows what I call a healthy growth. And the Middle East experienced that, and I believe also in America. So whether Trump wins or Hillary Clinton wins, I am not concerned about that as much as I'm concerned about the state of the church. And let me expound on this for a few seconds. What we see in the scriptures in regards to end times is not who sits in the White House. What we see in the scriptures in regards to end times is the apostasy and the falling away that is going to happen right before the rapture of the church. And what I see now more than any other time before is unbelievable um, false doctrines that are exploding all over the internet right now. One of which uh, caught my attention because many people are, are writing to me about um, Matthew 24, Luke, 20, Luke 21, Mark 13. And what do I think about this whole theory that everything has been fulfilled already in 70 AD and that's it. It's called basically um, the, um, the uh, Matthew, I mean, Matthew 24 unpacked in that um, it's all done. There is no hell, there is no heaven, there is no rapture, and all people are saved. And I, I've been watching that online, and it is so terrible to see people that believe in such heresy and in such uh, false doctrine. Because the Bible is so full with thousands of thousands of thousands of verses, not only that speaks of, of the rapture, speaks of heaven, speaks of hell, and speaks of of um, the fact that uh, not all people are saved. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, what we know is that God wants all people to be saved. He never created them already destined to, to uh, hell. But unfortunately, as we know, and as the Lord knows in His foreknowledge, not all of them will be. Not all of them will choose it. Not all of them will be ready. And this is the tragic thing. When, when you have people trying to tell others, hey, all are saved. Hey, there is no rapture. Hey, there is no hell at all. Um, everything has been achieved. The, 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 the victory is, is once and for all, and, and therefore humanity is saved. When you say that, you cause people not to be prepared. And that, that is, I believe, from the pits of hell. In fact, and when I read in, in Matthew 24, the whole account, I have to remind myself what is written towards the end of of that account. We, 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 we clearly can see the call to get ready. We, we see in Matthew 24, um, he says in verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour you, uh, your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house has known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming, and at an hour you do not expect. You see, he's not talking about season. He's not talking about. He's talking about the hour. And and we have to remember in verse thirty four and thirty six it says, "But um, of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only." Jesus said, "But as the days of Noah, so also will the coming of the Son of Man will be." So we must understand, we know the times, we know the seasons, but no one knows the hour. And therefore we have to be ready. We have to um, stand on guard. And the last thing that he says is um, in verse 46, Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. In other words, we need to be on guard. 
we need to be ready and we need to be found serving the Lord. Nothing else. It's not about Trump or Hillary. It's not about, you know, who sits in the White House or in the Kremlin. Now, yes, we have tons of beautiful prophecies that are, are helping us to understand the times and the seasons. But we have to stay on guard. We have to be ready. And we have to be found when He comes. We have to be found what? Serving the Lord. See, let's face it. If everything has been achieved in 70 AD, what, what's the whole idea of Israel returning back to their land? I mean, is God going to do anything with them at all? What is the whole idea of Jerusalem back in our hands? What is the whole idea of all the nations of the world are rising in order to destroy Jerusalem or in order to, to, to somehow um, um, take, the, take Jerusalem away from us? Which, by the way, leads me to an, a, a, a beautiful thing. You know, I always say that God has a sense of humor. How about that? You know, of all the people in the world, the person who found the oldest copy of the Bible, the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran, he's not a Christian, and he's not a Jew, he's not evangelical, and he's not uh, Orthodox or Catholic. We're talking about a Muslim. A Muslim shepherd, a Bedouin shepherd, found the oldest copy of the Old Testament. Uh, and so, isn't that a sense of humor? Now, let me take it even beyond that. Just on the same week that UNESCO was somehow getting a decision that completely disconnect Jerusalem from uh, Jewish heritage, the Temple Mount from Jewish heritage, we discover two amazing things. One is a papyrus that goes back to the 7th century BC, way before Islam was even a thought. And in that papyrus, this is, what, so to speak, an invoice that speaks of wine delivered to Jerusalem while it's in the hands of the people of Israel. Isn't that amazing? And if that's not enough, you say, yeah, but that's Jerusalem. It's not the Temple Mount. Well, let me tell you something. We just released an information a um, few days ago, two, three days ago, that in an excavation in an ancient mosque, a mosque, in the um, in the uh, city of it's a, actually it's a village called Nuba near Hebron. Uh, this is, we found there a an ancient inscription on the floor that says th the following thing. It says that the dome of the rock, the where uh, we have that golden dome today, is actually where and then they say Beit El Magdas in Arabic. Beit El Magdas is what in Hebrew Beit. Hamikdash, which means the temple of the Jews, the house of temple. Isn't that interesting? The Muslims themselves admit that that dome is situated on just the location where the, the uh, temple of Israel used to be. And I don't know if you know that, but I learned also um, in the last few weeks that uh, during the first phase of Islam in Jerusalem, in the very first years, um, we are talking about religious rites that were held inside the Dome of the Rock compound that basically imitated the ceremonies conducted, conducted in the Jewish temple. Believe it or not, what they did, they imitated that which the Jews did in the temple in Jerusalem. The people who conducted those ceremonies would purify themselves, change their clothes, burn incense, anoint the rock with oil, place certain uh, curtains around the foundation stone, and those worshippers would wear ceremonial clothing and use incense bur burners uh, over the foundation stone. These actions teach us that Muslims saw the Dome of the Rock as a continuance of the Jewish Temple. You see, <laughs> What they did, A, they said that we're actually um, having um, ceremonies just as the Jews had in the temple. Isn't that amazing? And so, you know, God, in, in, the, in the Word of God, it says that truth shall spring out of the earth. And I always tell people, you can suppress the truth as much as you want. You can just push it away. You can say it's not true. But God's word is true, and God's word uh, will stand when everything else will, pa will pass away. And so, you know, I cannot understand those false doctrines of, of everything has been already achieved 
in year 70 AD, when it's all about future, the Jews have to return to their land. As, he, as Jesus said, that fig tree must bloom again. In Hosea chapter 9, verse 10, Israel is the fig tree. And so we see that the return of the Jews, the return of the Jews to their land is a significant milestone in Bible prophecy that basically talks about all the other things that should happen. And then people are writing to me and asking me, well, what about what Jesus said that generation will, pass, will not pass until he's going to come back? Well, that's an interesting question. First of all, I'm not an expert, but I want you to know generation is not 40 years. Generation is normally a lifespan of people. And throughout history, um, you know, in the very early ages or days of the world, people lived more than 900 years. Now the average age is roughly, or average lifespan, between 70 and 80 years. And I believe that that could be much, much so uh, the time frame that we have since 19. 48 something between 70 and 80 years now i'm not here to say that i know the day and i know the hour but as far as a length of the time of a of a generation most likely we're looking into the 80 years as even in the book of psalms it refers to it the number 80. so very interesting i'm not sure what it is but i just want you to uh, to understand that um I also wanted to um, to encourage you to continue to pray, um, not only to go to vote if you live in America, and I'm telling you it's not over until the fat lady sings. Don't think that it's in the pocket of anyone. You go and you vote and you do the right thing and don't vote uh, just for or somebody's character. Vote for you know, vote for the unborn, vote for the Supreme Court, vote for family values, vote for Israel and vote for America. And, and these are the biblical values that um, should guide you as you go to vote um, in just a few days. But for the rest of the world, I, I just shared a message and I hope you were able to watch it on Europe getting ready for the Antichrist to rise. I spoke of the Vatican and of course I spoke of how I believe a political leader will rise from Western Europe. And right after Ezekiel's war, he will, he will be the one who will introduce peace. Um, and Europe indeed is ready. And you can find that message on YouTube, uh, on Jan Markel's uh, Olive Tree Ministries website, as well as on my Facebook. But I'm very encouraged because wherever Satan tries to do something, there's always the people that God leaves as his remnant. And um, I, just, uh, I just finished yesterday a message on Mount Carmel with Elijah and those that God left that did not bow down to the Baal. And, and I'm encouraged because uh, I'm, uh, I'm invited to speak uh, not only in England, but also lately I received invitations to Croatia, Germany, Norway, France, and, uh, and more. And the reason why I'm so happy is because I believe uh, the closer we get in, in, in the darker Europe gets, the more the believers are, are, are getting active and, 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 and thirsty and hungry to hear the Word of God, and then more people out there that are willing to listen. Just before the total blindness and the total deception is going to befall where the Antichrist will indeed rule, I believe we have a, short, a, a small window of opportunity to just reach Europe as much as we can not only the Europeans that were there, but also even anyone that came as immigrants or whatever. They need to hear the truth, and I'm so excited that somehow in 2017, I'm going to try and cram all of those countries. And even if it's just for a weekend at a time, we want to share the gospel as much as we can. Um, so I just wanted to update you about those things. Uh, just remember, God is in full control. We are so excited to see what is going on in the world. Um, don't, uh, don't go after terrible, horrible, false doctrines. Please do me a favor. Stay, uh, stay with the Word of God and, and remember that you cannot interpret the Word of God only um, by uh, one person or other person's interpretation. You have to look at the whole picture. And you have to look at Old Testament as well as New Testament and at the reality. And look around you. God gave us brains 
gave us eyes, gave us a mouth, and we need to we need to look at what's going on around the world. We need to read what the Bible says, and we need to say and speak out and communicate those words to the world around us. Um, I would like also to um, wish to my very good friend and brother in the Lord, Manny Pacquiao, um, much success in his upcoming fight in a couple of days in Vegas. Uh, probably the last fight is a, uh, as a, a professional boxer, maybe. But I, I want to uh, tell you that every time he's fighting in Vegas, it's really not about the fight. He is having Bible studies every evening and hundreds of hundreds of people are showing up. I personally had the privilege of leading three of those uh, Bible studies in, in different uh, fights in the past and I know that in his mind it's all about the gospel it's all about proclaiming Jesus as Lord and and getting the attention of the unsaved to um, to the gospel and to the need to get right with the Lord so I, I want to really wish him much success and uh, fight keep fighting the good fight I know that you're also having your political career and even through there you can influence a nation of 100 million people that is respecting you a lot. Um, all in all, a very tense week is ahead of us. And for the American people, I want to encourage you not only to go to vote, but also stay positive. And remember, the church is actually thriving through crisis and through persecution. So we, we need to just pray that throughout this whole thing, all that is going on right now, the name of Christ is going to be praised and glorified. And, um, you know, and I'm here in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is quiet. Jerusalem is beautiful. Jerusalem is, is very peaceful. And, and we know that the times will come and it won't be so. And we'll be out of here when it happens. But until then, I want to uh, encourage you to come over. Um, to come over and see and behold Israel and see what God is doing. And this will change your life completely. I want to com continue and urge you not only to come yourself, but um, my on my heart, God really put young adults, those people in colleges and in universities that are given to the world horrible deception and that is teaching them to hate Israel, teaching them false things about the Bible and of course about what's going on around the world and uh, I just, I just hope that um, if you're not able to come, at least somehow help someone to come in that age group, and so they will be grounded in the world, in the world, and they will be um, opening their eyes to see what really is going on, and and their faith will be so stronger once they get back, and once they get back, not only that they will be stronger in their faith, but they will be communicating that in a much more powerful way back home in their, in their universities or colleges. So, keep praying about those things. And um, keep praying for your nation, Americans, because it's not over. And um, we're going to have great things ahead of us. But I do want you to um, understand this week will be ugly, very ugly. There will be some very bad things that are going to surface uh, from both sides. And you just need to stay focused because this is the, the work of the enemy to divert you from what is really going on. So just stay focused on, on the biblical um, agenda and, and, and platform and just go to vote. Uh, and spend less time in front of TV and more time on your knees in the coming week. And that will really be a much better thing to do. Um, so remember... The world is moving forward. God's plan is uh, everything falls in the right place. And all that we see around us it should cause all of us to be greatly encouraged that um, things are in control and that uh, uh, our hope is really not in this world. And our blessed hope, the return of Christ to take us, is really at hand. So let us watch what's going on around and let us keep our eyes up, and lift up our heads for our redemption is indeed drawing nigh. So from Jerusalem, from the city of the great king, from the city that God said, I will put my name upon it, a city that he promised to David and to the people of Israel, from here I send you much love. And because I really want to stay in touch with you and I really want to, to con continue to connect with us, please sign up on our email updates 
just go to the uh, Facebook page of Behold Israel or Amir Tzalfati and click on um, sign up and uh, we'll get you that email. Today was the first day we sent the first email blast and I hope it will bless many. And I also want you to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Behold Israel, because you'll be able to see all of those updates and more um, in the near future. I also want you to know that I'm going to release to YouTube some of uh, the Bible studies, the short 20 minutes long Bible studies that I gave on location, different places in Israel. Um, I just did it in, in February. I'll probably release it one every week or so, so you'll be blessed. And if you cannot come to Israel, we will bring Israel to you. Uh, that's my heart. My heart is that, that people will be blessed by the Word of God, by the people of God, and by the land of God. And so you can behold Israel not only um, by coming to Israel, but if you cannot make it, I want you to at least behold Israel by watching it uh, from your home. And that will bless my heart, it will bless the heart of God, I believe, to see people learning about His land, learning about His, his people, learning about uh, those sites, understanding what happened there biblically, and understanding what the Bible says when it comes to the message behind those places. I love you from Jerusalem. Shalom. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I will keep praying for wherever you are. Keep writing to us. Keep praying uh, for us. And um, I'm tomorrow evening, I'm returning back home after almost a month of, of being away and working nonstop without even a day of rest tomorrow evening. I'll, I'll celebrate the Shabbat with my family finally and we'll be able to have some good time of taking care of uh, family business and I am so happy that also I'll be having the um, the privilege of uh, baptizing my firstborn son Ariel. Um, I've been praying for that for quite a long time and uh, God is doing the work in his, in his heart um, and I'll be also sharing uh, in my own church in, in Haifa, a message on Bible prophecy. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, two weeks uh, back home. And uh, thank you for everything. Thank you for your prayers. I love you all. God bless you. And Shalom.